did to it here, you know, if they were going to make it big Broadway, you know, which would, which would be nice. It needs to be staged large, I think, now. Yeah. Well, they, they have a the big stage out there, the La Jolla Playhouse. Yeah. It's big. Here we go, guys. Stand by, please. Three, two, one, and roll. Kevin, you ever run into a Kevin Klein look-alike? That would be strange. I've run into one of mine, which is even more frightening for me, but it's it's very weird. I know he's out there somewhere. There, I mean, I do believe that there is someone who looks... I've seen people that come close. If I'd really found a look like, though, I would have gotten him into the movie and let him play one of these parts. Um, did you ever get a feeling for what it might be like to be the President of the United States, even for a minute? Yeah. Yeah, I got a taste of it. I mean, the sets and the whole ambiance was so authentic. That's one of the reasons I think the comedy works, is because it's like they created this very official feeling space. Mm -hmm. And it was like going into a church. You know how something happens to you physically mm -hmm. and psychologically when you, when you enter a space that has this kind of inner sanctum feeling to it and everybody becomes very hushed in their way of speech. And so it's kind of, <clears throat> it just makes you want to do something funny. Do you get the impression that it could be pretty heady stuff to be one day a common man, the next day to be president and treated that way with Secret Service people walking in front of you and all Well, that, that. was the whole that was the whole job to kind of enter into the spirit of that of, of, of a guy, just a regular guy who's suddenly put in this position. I had to <clears throat> I had to kind of go that journey. And they all play I mean, they didn't like I mean, the, the, the assistant directors, whenever they had their walkie talkies, say the Eagles coming in, the Eagles, you know, they'd walk you from the dressing room mm -hmm. onto the set, and they're always afraid actors are going to get lost on on mm -hmm. the sound stage. So they're always there's <laughs> always somebody shadowing you, and they're all and they're talking like I'm the president. The Eagles, uh, the Eagles going into the bathroom. The Eagles coming out of the bathroom. The Eagles flying. The Eagles landing. The Eagles here. The Eagles ready. The Eagles getting his makeup touched up. Make you know, the Eagles hair is must, and uh, it was just sort of a joke. But it was like. Nothing happened until I was ready, you yeah. know? That was sort of fun. How much uh, acting does the President of the United States have to have in his uh, bag of tricks? Well, I think one of the morals of the movie is that, I mean, one of the, one of the problems with Bill Mitchell, the real president that Dave impersonates, is that he's a bit into image and into projecting a certain image, and he's very concerned about the polls and his popularity. and uh, and. Dave, actually, after he goes the journey of trying on the trappings of authority and power and trying, tries to find himself sort of in the role of president, he comes out the other end, I think, feeling, realizing that if he's himself and he's just genuinely dealing with matters that concern him, that are very human and, and on a human level, that that's how he's most effective and uh, that that's what really being presidential is. What's your relationship with your uh, other movies? You don't watch them, I understand. <clears throat> Did I say that? Depends. I don't know. You, you, you'll turn on the set and won't go away if it's one's there? Um, gee, it, it, it depends. I've come across, you know, on sh uh, cable television, sometimes I'll see a movie that I haven't seen for a while. And, and, and it's interesting because the, the perspective has changed. Suddenly years have interceded and critics' remarks or, or general... You know, I don't think you can really judge a movie until about ten years after it's it's been made to really see, because there's so much attendant stuff that comes with the release of a of a movie and popular opinion. Um, same with a book. I think when you can look back on a movie, though, sometimes I'm struck with how it's really withstood the test of time, or that it's really this scene or that scene looks really good, or conversely that. Really not very good. <laughs> when people uh, stop you on the street, fans, what do they most peg you with? What part? Usually, a fish called Wanda. I think more people saw that movie than any other movie I've done. And you, that was probably your most crazy or whatever in one direction or the other that mm -hmm. people would you know remember. Not that the other ones weren't memorable, but that was particularly a, kind of a wacky guy. Very. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was out there. How would you describe your career path? to this point? Uh, desultory. You know, it meanders. I, 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 occasionally I'm attracted to things that are popular, uh, but more as often I'd say I'm attracted to things that just sort of appeal to a smaller 
audience. I, I like, I have a kind of wide range of, of interests in terms of my choices of, of material and the, and the roles that I choose. A lot of times it's just, it's just what stimulates me, what's going to be fun for me. Do you have any sense of what's commercial? Just when I think I do, I'm proven wrong. <laughs> I thought no one would see A Fish Called Wanda. <laughs> and a little British movie with John Cleese. Yeah, and he thought that too. He actually said, oh, well, this, I think, you know, we'll, I think, you know, we'll all do, we'll maybe do about 25, 30 million dollars and 185 million dollars later. We had no idea that the. And then people, on the other hand, you I mean, had I, a I don't mean to measure a yeah. movie's success in dollars, but well, it is. But just I think that's one way to look at success because well, people want to see it, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? No, no, no. I think that's the popular opinion that a movie is successful if if 180 million dollars worth of people saw it. I think some movies are geared to that audience, to a popular audience, to a wide audience, and some. I've made movies where the director and the studio and everyone concerned knows that this is not for everybody but that we hope we'll find our audience, and it could be a smaller audience, because we're dealing with a um, particular subject matter that's not necessarily appealing to the masses. Are you glad the Westerns are coming back? Because you were in a great Western Silverado. Well, we all thought we'd single-handedly bring back the Western. I think we started, started something going, or helped start something going that's, that's bringing back Westerns. Um, I'm not a big Western fan. I think it was... A, I had a ball doing it. I love horses and I loved working in that genre because uh, it was something I'd never really pictured myself doing. Uh, and I loved the people and the whole experience was great. But um, as, a, as a morality tale, the Western, you know, where people were inventing the morality from day to day in the old frontier, it's a great kind of setting for, for what can be a very moral sort of storytelling and if it's used that way I think it can be a great great uh, well, enjoyed you in this I hope it's a big hit thanks and we can measure this out of commercial success thank you. I think this is one that's <laughs> aimed at a large audience I have okay, to say thank yeah. you thank you